Nasty. This is a shotgun. Oh, yeah, it's a shotgun with the happy dads out here. Yeah, that's well, yours. My boy Dre right here. You know, we're keeping it clean, the bubble issues. Wait, I can't even take this off because my nails. Oh, no. Come on, Cynthia. What up? <laughs> bro, if you break one, I'm going to throw it. Yeah, you good? I know. It's what? I'm Shit, bro, my bad. Get ready, though. My real nails. Oh, you just prep it a little bit here. This is podcast scene before the podcast. I get a little bit close, closer together. He doesn't bite, bro. He doesn't bite. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Cheers. Cheers. Hey, I'm bashing this one. Oh, no way. You done? No. He's like, no. I just wanted to be involved. He won't throw it in. A little bit loud. Podcast time. All right, you ready? Let's do it. Let's do it. We are once again with the one and only Dre, owner of South Made Rancho Cucamonga, in the house, baby. Let's go. <laughs> it's been a wild morning already, slash afternoon. Yeah, it's been a crazy one. But how are you feeling, bro? Good, dude. Honestly, I was super anxious because... I was trying to get out of Dusko, like, dude, what are you asking so I can, like, prepare myself? And he was like, hey, don't worry about it. You'll do good. And I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? Dude? And so, uh, yeah, I was like, whatever, we'll just get into it. To today's today's about you. I know, dude. Today's about you. I was wondering why I felt so blessed today. It's about me. Uh, we're bring out the waterworks already. <laughs> but you have owned this location for how long now? Yeah, dude, so I started here uh, in 2017. I was... I don't know, a little backdrop. Um, Run it. I, in 2011, 2010, I graduated. 2011, I left for the Army. Um, I was gone for about four or five years, and I just realized, I was like, man, I was like, I, I just, this isn't for me, you know? And uh, it was dope. I learned a lot. Like, don't have anything bad to say about it. Um, I just just knew there was more meant for me out there. Mm. Um, so, yeah, 2015, I moved back. I was kind of, like, still trying to figure myself out. Like, so what the fuck am I going to do? What yeah. do I like to do? Um, and then, so I was getting ready to, um, leave for my first like reserves mission. So even though I left active duty, I was still like in the reserve component. So I was, um, going in to do that. Like, it's like a weekend warrior kind of thing, like one week in a month, two weeks in the summer. And it was cool because like, I felt like in 2015, I just left like the greatest team ever. Right. Everybody knew who I was. I like built up respect for myself. So it was kind of scary. And, um, when I, I was kind of doing my own thing, sleeping in, you know, just enjoying, like, the civilian life for, like, a whole year. Yeah. Um, then, <laughs> yeah, and then I finally left for the reserve component for the first time, and I was like, dude, I felt like I was back in the squad, back in the team. So I was taking, like, every mission that came up. I was leaving for two months, coming back for two weeks, leaving for six months, coming back for a week. And then um, it just got really just old real quick. Um, you know, I, I, I wanted to establish myself and figure out what was going on. So in 2017, I told myself, like, I'm not leaving anymore. Um, you know, I'm going to go to school full time. It was super cool because the Army paid for it, and they were paying me to go. So that was, I just consider that, like, my job. Yeah. And um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> happy dad. Dude. <laughs> Fucking and, happy dad. You already know. Hits. <laughs> yeah. And then um, so at that time, I think there wasn't a whole lot of self-made training facility locations. Um, I think there was just Corona. So I followed a lot of the trainers there and it was like super glamorized, dude. I was like, dude, I'm barely getting into working out, but that shit looks crazy. You know, how long did you have working out? Dude, I, I mean, I started working out in 2011 when I left for the army, but oh, it was man. like forced, you know, like it don't <laughs> matter what it is. If somebody's telling you you have to do it, you're gonna be like, man, fuck this. I don't, it's not enjoyable. Yeah. Um, and then when I deployed in 2013, it's like I had a lot of time to go to the gym. And so that's when I really got into like learning how to make it enjoyable. It was for me. I was super skinny. I wanted to put on weight. And then I, uh, yeah, so I started going to the gym for like three hours a day, eating everything in sight, like trying to like whatever. Okay. And, um. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, so in 2017, I moved back here. I was going to school full-time, and then I saw... I was actually going to reach out to a different location, but I was so intimidated, man. I was like a little shrimp, more of a shrimp. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I reached out to the owner of Self-Made Rancho because they had just announced that they're opening up. 
And I was like, dude, this is perfect. You know, like, um, they're new. I'm new to this. I felt like it was going to be like a good, good mix, good, good mix, a good start. You yeah. know, I was like, we're all going to learn together. <laughs> and, <laughs> together uh, forever. Yeah, bro. And it was crazy because I actually like came in and interviewed. Uh, so my partner now that I own the facility with actually interviewed me. And um, when I told everybody, I, I trip out because I literally walked into the building. They were still trying to figure out what was going on. You know, the franchise was still pretty newer. Um, so a lot of systems that we have now weren't in place back then. So yeah <laughs> i walked in there's literally no equipment like there was just they just put up black paint all over the walls and he's like pitching me this 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 picture you know of what like this this dream is gonna be and i'm like yeah whatever dude sign me up you know <laughs> i was like i'll make it work yeah and um so yeah it, but you signed on as a trainer or as, I signed as, on a, as a trainer yeah and honestly like and i tell everybody i kind of like laugh looking back at it now i just wanted it so bad and i i already knew i was gonna make it work that like I honestly, at that time, coming in for the interview, I didn't know the names of all the exercises. I know how to do everything pretty correctly. I just couldn't tell you the name of the exercise, you know? Yeah, they, I, was like, I don't know if it was my memory. <laughs> I don't know if it was me or, like, what. But um, I just laugh, you know, and I, and I tell people now, like, my partner would have told me back then, like, hey, man, just keep hustling, you know? Um, make this work, and in three years, you know, you'll run this place with, with me. I would have laughed, man. I would have laughed because I was like, dude, I was like, what do you mean? Run a business? I was like, I have no idea how to charge people, how to structure anything. I just know how to, I like to work out. You know, yeah. I know how to run somebody through a good workout. And, um, yeah, like I said, I just grind and hustled. I invested a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of money into um, programs in the beginning to get all this stuff up and going. Social media wasn't super big like it was now. Um, so, yeah, I just grinded. I had like a good core group of people coming up learning at the same time as me so we were kind of like it was like a friendly competition all of us were bouncing off of each other and growing and yeah. i saw uh you know people on those days i didn't feel like shooting content i saw my homie shooting content i was like what am i doing dude i'm gonna go shoot some shit you know yeah and um so yeah so that was 2017 and it was a wild ride i think six months into it i was like bursting at the seams i was training like 15, 16 hours a day, and I got very overwhelmed very quick, but, like, I think my <laughs> my toxic trait is I can't sit still for too long. So six <laughs> months into training, dude, I, I went and met with the CEO. I was like, how do I open one of these, you know? Like, this is dope. I can see this working. How do I open one? And he gave me just the basic requirements. I was like, cool. At the time, I couldn't make it happen. I just kept grinding. So when the opportunity pre presented itself, took uh, it. three years later, I was ready to go, dude. You know, there was two other investors into this facility, and they were ready to step back and retire. And I was ready to go when the opportunity came up. So what do you think that that difference of from being a trainer to being a owner? What does that difference look like? Oh, man, it's a huge difference. Uh, so at that time, like I said, I was like, the Army really taught me it don't matter what position you're in, entry level, whatever it is, always learn two positions above you, right? Yeah. So as me, as normal trainer, just, I wasn't just coming in, just focusing on myself. I was, dude, I was helping everybody else grow with me. Yeah, like you're you know? growing and you know what? It's not just me, it's everybody that's. Yeah, dude, I felt like an obligation. Like if I saw somebody struggling, I'm hey, look, this is what I'm doing. This is yeah. what's working well for me to try this, you know? And it's like, I never asked for anything in return, bro. I didn't charge anybody to help him with anything. It was just, maybe it was like selfish reasons, but it's like, like, just to see them do well without even saying anything. That's your payment, though. Bro, it was like, yeah, I just came back tenfold. I was like, bro, this shit feels good. But do you think because you gave that to those people without charging them or asking anything back, you are where you are now? Because oh, 100%, now the universe paid you back? 100%. Like, everything comes back tenfold. And like I said, it's like, it's just really doing things for others without asking for anything in return. It's like, it's going to come back in return, you know? And um, so, yeah, so I was helping everybody build up their programs, all that good stuff. And... Um, so the owners obviously saw what I was doing without me saying anything, you know, they saw the numbers booming. So when the position came open as a lead trainer, which is like a manager here, yeah. um, I mean, it's like a no brainer, dude. And so I was like, <laughs> at that time I was booming. So I was hustling with my training portion, but I was also showing other potential trainers what was possible. You know, I was like, I literally started from nothing, making all this stuff happen. And, um, so yeah, they made me a lead trainer and my partner now is just sending him fucking names and debit cards. It's like, yo, run this on the first, run this one, run this one, you know, sending him three, four, five new trainers a month. So it was just, shit. I was already doing ownership. I didn't even realize it. I was doing ownership. As before a trainer. ownership. <laughs> yeah. Before I was even a manager, a yeah. lead, you know, I was doing it. And so when I became the lead, I was already running that. And then, um, yeah, it was just an easy transition and, uh, yeah, man. Now we're so here. I was already ready. Yeah. So, is, but I didn't. I, there was a lot of the ownership stuff I didn't see. A lot of the behind the scenes stuff that was, you know, uh, behind closed doors. So, what's that? What's that piece of advice then? 
for someone that wants to transition into be a business owner, not just here in fitness, but in anywhere from, from being, say they're doing, uh, shit, we can even put it, they're working at McDonald's and they're just an employee, but they want to run that shit. What do you, what's that like, hey, I feel like you got to do this in order to differentiate yourself? I feel like a lot of the times, dude, like if I tell you right now, like where do you see yourself in five years, right? And you're like, dude, I want to work for NASA. I'm like, dope. Like what are the requirements? And if you tell me, I don't know, I just want to do it. You don't really have like a solid plan, right? Yeah. And I tell everybody even now, it doesn't matter if you're trying to go within this fitness realm, within the business realm, or anything. It's like, have you looked at the requirements, right? What's it take to get there? Are you working towards it? Yeah. Right. Instead of just like fishing for that opportunity, it's like you start like almost like planting seeds. Right. If you plant those seeds and take care of them, put a lot of time and effort into it, it's going to grow eventually. Like that's just going to sprout, you know. But if you're just like, yeah, I want this. I want this. There's not a lot of weight behind it. So do you have weight behind your dream? Or are you kind of just wishing for some shit to pop off? Like I said, like in my situation, um, dude, I was fucking grinding, man. And it's like I didn't know any better. Bro, I was in a single at the time. I wasn't going on dates. I wasn't like, I wasn't turning up. I wasn't like partying. I was just, man, I was training 15, 16 hours a day. I lived, vision. I lived an hour and a half away from the gym, bro. I slept in my car. I have the same story as like a lot of other people. I slept in my car to make this stuff work, bro. There's no shower here. I'd bring my stuff to 24 to shower and sleep in my car there just to get an extra two hours of sleep. And, um, yeah, bro, you just really have to have that tunnel vision and look at the requirements, you know? So if you're hustling and grinding, when the opportunity comes up, you're ready to take it, you know? If you're not, if you're kind of just chilling, going through the motions, kind of just here but not here, and the opportunity comes up, that's when you're going to beat yourself up, Yeah, you know? You're going to be like, ready fuck, damn, I could have, dude. Like, I wish I would have went back in time and these last six months really grinded it out. But it's like, you know, you, you, <laughs> you make it what it is, you know? We got to give it up, bro. Come on, bro. That's, that's you see? <laughs> 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 The, <laughs> the thing about this podcast is without you really knowing, like, yo, like, because you're sitting here because you've busted your, your ass, dog. Like, you did all that sleeping in the car, working X amount of hours a day just to sit here and give a little bit of your story, a little bit of a glimpse. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of shit that you've gone through from little kid as to now, yeah, being a mind. dad. Being a, a gym owner, being a business owner, Damn, you know what I'm saying? The list. <laughs> <laughs> There's the list is endless. Oh, yeah, yeah. But the beauty about this podcast is we always got to bring up what was that tough moment in your life where you're like, "Fuck, bro, I don't think I can do this anymore." Your turn back moment. You had to make a decision. As far as like training, nah, bro. Life, like shit, was too hard. Say maybe from getting out of the army. Or getting into the oh, business. Yeah, dude. Um, or even as a child, bro. What, what, what's the toughest moments in Dre's life that maybe n none of us know? Man, I think I'm a very, like, strong, emotional person, dude. Or it's like... Uh, Why are you strong emotional? I feel like growing up, dude, I didn't have an emotional outlet, right? It was like, figure this shit out yourself. Or keep complaining about it, right? So growing up, it's like, I didn't have anybody I can talk to and, like, you know, release all these emotions and all this crazy stuff. I never complained about it. That's how I grew up. That's all I knew. You know, so as I grew up, you know, I was 18. I had just graduated. I moved out when I was 19. I've been, like, financially on my own, 100% on my own. Since then, bro, I've not asked anybody for a single dime for a handout, nothing. It's always been, like, dude, if I want this shit, I got to make it work, right? And then, um, yeah, when, when I was, dude, my son was born when I was 19. At the time, like, I, I trip out because if you would have asked me back then, bro, I would have told you, like, I know how this world works. Like, I, I got this shit figured out, bro. I'm having a baby. Was that life-changing then? Oh, it was extremely life-changing without me even realizing it, though. But there's a lot of components to it, too, where it's yeah. like, um, you know, I excelled very fast in the military. And I think a lot had to do with me having a son. People saw that I had responsibilities. Even though I was like, a 19-year-old kid, bro, I was telling... 35 year olds is what to do. So. Well, what, what was that responsibility then as a, as a parent? It's as a dad? just like being able to provide, bro. Like for me, it's like I didn't grow up like super, you know, poor or anything. Where, you grew, where, where did you grow up at? I grew up in Moreno Valley, California, right? So it's nothing crazy. Uh, it's nothing crazy. But like I, my parents have always been, I would say like well off, they, but they're not cheap. I would say my parents were very frugal. 
right? So growing up, you know, I'd go to school and stuff, and like right now, like shoes, dude. Like I love shoes, man. But just for example, um, don't point at the shoes. My shit is dirty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've had it for two years. <laughs> yeah, but just simple things, dude. It's like um, everything that I wanted when I was younger. It, it would just always like spark up whenever I was struggling or whatever. And then I saw my son growing and start, started seeing like he likes the things that I like and stuff like that. So. Easy yeah, reflection. it's just the biggest struggle and just being able to provide. I feel like that's just always kept me going, um, especially when I got out, dude. When I got out the Army, dude, I, I battled through, like, bad depression. And, again, I, like, I've never talked to, like, anybody about all this stuff. But Here we are. Yeah, yeah here we are. <laughs> and so, like, yeah, for, like, whole year, dude, you know, because I left from – when I got out the Army, dude, I, like I said, I excelled very fast. Everybody knew who I was. My name meant something. I built something behind my name. And then, so when I got out and then moved back here, it's like, nobody knew what the fuck I did back there. Like, you know, all the stuff that I did, all the great things and all this instructing and teaching is everything I was doing already. This is not new. So people think like, oh yeah, you just started, um, you know, two years ago, you know, teaching and showing other people how to do stuff. I was like, no, dude, I've been doing this shit since 2011. You know, yeah. I was like, that's what I found. That was my spark that like, one thing I was good at, I love like having my name. I'll never say that I did anything for anybody or I made you. I'll say, I'll never say I made you. Yeah. But I just just knowing that you know that I had like a little piece to help you get to where you're at, like I'm like, dude, that shit like makes me feel good. Yeah. So um, so yeah, teaching people like you know, so I was on uh like in the army, dude. I was on tanks, right? You start off driving it, but I was already learning two steps above. So like when I moved to the next position, it was my job to train the person under me, right? Because if anything happened, it was on me if you fucked up or who whatever. Yeah. Um, so. <laughs> All right. So what got you out of the depression though? Cause that that's like what got me out of the depression, dude. Is like when I finally was able to leave for the reserves, and I literally put the fucking uniform back on, bro. And even it, even though I was in a new space where nobody knew who I was at, my rank had respect attached to it, right? So I was automatically treated with respect, and um, you know, people talked to me a certain way, and I was like, damn, I'm back, you know, I'm back. And then I got addicted to it, so that's why I was like, send me here. They were like, oh, this mission pops up. We need somebody to go here for six months. I was like, send me, you know. And it was, it was a lot of sacrifices that I had to do. Oh. I feel like emotionally, financially, all that stuff to be able to take to the next step. But oh, was it tough leaving knowing you had your son? <laughs> yeah, man. But so at the, at the, the, time, the, re the reason I bring this up, right, because I'm a dad, you're a dad. And when there's things that we need to be doing, we got to spend time away. Oh, yeah. And this week and just earlier, and we do have a mom present. And when we leave our kids, you know, moms take it differently than us mm. i feel like us we mask it oh, yeah. as much as it hurts fuck it yeah i gotta go do this yeah, yeah yeah until we start talking about it then people start finding out really like dude it hurts yeah. me i feel like all these emotions are like you're human dude we all bleed the same it's like everybody feels the shit whether you show it or not it's like like i said i, I feel like i i mask all my emotions just how i grew up until it just fucking blows up one day or whatever so what do you tell yourself or well, what did you yeah, tell yourself it just, when you it just it's this the sacrifice the sacrifice this is what i have to do now to get to here right so like when my son turned five i was gone for three of those years between training deployments and all this other army shit and so when i moved back here in 2015 he was just getting into kindergarten and it hit me dude i was like i can't be fucking leaving all the time no more dude i was like this like i those are core memories dude you know like i remember going to kindergarten you know i remember yeah. elementary school i remember going to fifth grade i remember like going to baseball practice and all this stuff so it just really hit me i was like you know what i can't do this shit no more this is not me I, I, it doesn't make me truly happy it just makes me feel important yeah right but um you know all the, since i was able to leave i was able to save up a lot of money and kind of like make this transition a little bit easier for me and, you know, and so my goal was always like, you know, I need to get my son like full time and like I want to be present. I want to take him to practices. I want to be able to take this to do to school every single day. And, you know, and so I hustled it out. I grinded. I make I, I dude, I was out here, you know, his his mom was like an hour away. And so, you know, me sleeping in my car, I always knew it wasn't going to be forever. And it finally hit, you know, that like three year mark and that opportunity came up and it just everything just works out the way it's supposed to man i was through training and all this stuff dude I, I was able to buy like a house you know and i was like this house is like the staple of it i'm able to like uh, come on bro give yourself those yeah, yeah, yeah. give yourself those fucking flowers dog yeah, yeah, just, you have to yeah so I, I was able to like buy a house and for him to have his own room and so like i said all this stuff growing up that i didn't have that i wanted kind of like fueled what i really wanted to make happen for him and um 
so yeah, like I didn't have my own room growing up. You know, I had always shared it with siblings and stuff like that. So for him to have his own room with his own gaming setup, with his own computer, where he has his little space where he can go, dude, I'm just yeah. like, that shit was worth it, dude. Like, even though I had to leave so much before and, you know, and me and him are really good with communication and, and, you know, he understands like when I have to leave or it's like, dude, I have to work, you know, like I have to like, uh, you know, spend this week because I have a lot of stuff coming up. And so he's just very understanding with it. He's very mature for his age. How do you feel now having your son around? Oh, dude, I love it, man. It's like, it's crazy because I have a lot of conversations with him. And it's like, again, I had to grow up the way I did. Everything that happened in my life because it was meant to happen, you know? So I can't complain of anything that happened in the past because that had to happen for me to get here, yeah. right? So the biggest thing is like, I don't want him to grow up the way I grew up. I don't want him to have an emotional outlet. I ask him all every day, bro. Like, how's your day going? What's three good things going on right now? And what's three bad things, you know, for him just to be able to like express that is just like, damn, that shit makes me feel good. That's a, you tic know? That's a TikTok. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> clip, clip that. Clip that. <laughs> yeah, man. And so I like, since podcast was crazy where she was like, if you, you know, describe your son, like he's literally perfect, bro. That's him, you know? And so it, I can tell him to do one thing once and he'll get it done. No questions asked. He knows there's a time and place where we can like mess around and fuck around. Yeah. And then obviously when we're on public, it's like, bro, you know, you can't talk to me like that out here. But at the <laughs> house, bro, yeah, what's up? You, you know, messing around. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that's yeah. like the dynamic that we have that I always wanted, bro. You Like as a parent, bro, you get to be the dad you always wanted. Not to say your parents were shitty or anything, but you get to be exactly what you wanted, you we, know? We prepare ourselves now so when it, when it does come time for our kids to know what life is, hey, they don't, they don't see the way we saw it. No, no way. And how you said, it's not that we had a bad childhood or anything no. because – I was very blessed with my parents, but I know I didn't have that emotional outlet. Yeah. My thing was, yo, I, how you said, I have to go to work right now. When we had, I had my son when I was 23, I was living with my parents the whole time. Like, I didn't have a savings. I didn't care about any other responsibilities. Still I was trying to figure out life. Yeah, like I was dating my girlfriend and we would go, I would drop her off back home. I would go home and chilling until the, like, yo, it's, he's coming or his ears. <laughs> I'm like, as soon as that happened, I was like, all right, we gotta go find a spot. Yeah. What do you mean? I'm like, just push you. you I'm like, I, you I have to. And I was like, it's not that my parents are not gonna allow me to live here because they will. Like, my mom was like, no, don't go, stay here. <laughs> I'm like, no. Like, that's how I would be. Yeah. For sure. Dude. So I was like, no, like, I have to go. You guys prepared me for this. So when shit did hit the fan wow. and it's for, it's time for me to walk on my own. I get to do this. If I follow my own, then it's on me. It's not on you anymore. Like, we moved out, and I was like, if I didn't make rent, that's on me. So not going out, not spending this, this, this. Hey, I got to pay X amount of money the first of the month. Hey, I can't go. It's like, yo, but it's on me. If this doesn't work out, it's on me. Yeah. Nobody else. But because of my son, because of you, I got to make sure I get up every day, no matter what their situation is. I may be feeling sick. May be depressed. I may be hurting, angry, but I got to get up. Yeah, that's sure. what we got to put on ourselves. And that's one thing that I don't think we talk about enough is when dads get go out into the world to do their thing, how much pressure we have on ourselves. Oh, man, it's a whole lot. But I, it's crazy because, like, when I had him, at, had him at 19, I was like, like you're saying, it, it forces you to do that stuff. And it's yeah. not negotiable, bro. It's nah. not like. Some hey, people man, try to I, negotiate I like, with this. I feel like, yeah, bro, it's like, bro, when you wake up in the morning, you got socks on? Right now? Socks? Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, you put them on every day, right? Exactly. Non-negotiable, right? Say so you don't ask yourself, like, hey, should I put these on today or not? It's just like, dude, like, it's just non-negotiable, bro. But it's like, if you wire your brain to see your business, your life, your your family relationships like that, it's like, damn, bro. But, be, you know, but what, people put, what's important. they put an ultimatum. Mm -hmm. They put an option. Ah, maybe... Maybe today I don't put socks. I'll put yeah, sandals on. Nah. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Put, sandal, put socks on with your sandals. <laughs> don't but play, don't but play around with us. Like, that's Jose. He's, He's a, a menace. <laughs> Jose's a menace. But that's why everybody wants to fight him. Fuck, <laughs> 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 we're going to do a sock check right now. <laughs> hey, pull him up. <laughs> Sin for sure. Sin, don't got Sin, socks on. Sin, do you have she, socks? She just looked like one of those. <laughs> Oh, she got the tube socks. She got the Mountain Climber 3000s. What the fuck, dude? <laughs> Anyways, bro, it's just not negotiable, bro. It's like when you wake up in the morning, like, I can't remember where I seen it. It was like a fucking video on Instagram or something like that. But it's like when your alarm goes off in the morning, right, 
you have like a split half a second before you think like, damn, I'm either going to hit the snooze button or I'm going to get the fuck up, right? Because when you go to sleep at night, dude, you like set the intention. When you set that alarm, I'm going to get up at this time because I got X, Y, Z to do, right? Yeah. You So you set that intention. That's not negotiable when you go to sleep. But when you wake up, obviously you're tired, you're tossing and turning, whatever it is, you know, And it, but it's that split second where you, you, you allow yourself to have that ultimatum. You allow yourself to have the ultimatum. Okay. So right? let's put it different. So when you put that snooze and then you wake up late, you have the other. You're, already, you're, you're already ha- behind. Yeah, you have, but you have the other option. Let me just wait till tomorrow then to start it. Or do I get up? Now I'm just backtracked and I still got to go get shit done. You still got to, I mean, I, I would still be like, I still got to get it done, but I'm going to be stressed out, falling behind, trying to get all this shit right done. Right now. <laughs> yeah. Literally right now. Everything that happened. This morning. <laughs> this morning. I was like. I told Dylan when we were coming over here, and I was like, we went out, and I, I went out, actually. And I woke up, and I woke up to a bad dream. But my bad dream wasn't like, ah, shit hit the fam up. I was late to the podcast. <gasps> I was like. It was a nightmare. I, what do you I was like, dream? fuck, I didn't wake up. What the fuck? I woke up, and I was at the clock, 8 o'clock. I was like, okay, cool, chilling. And then all this shit other happened, and I went home. And on the way home, I'm already, like, mad. I'm like. Dude, how can I do this? This is this. But and then it was a take a breath. I, I saw your story uh, right now. But what you said, bro, is like that's how I see literally everything. You're like everything happens for a reason, right? Yeah. Like that shit was meant to happen for one reason or another, bro. That was meant to happen. So like, I, like it was, I trip out that you said that, dude, because it's like that's how everyone should see everything. Instead of like stressing about it, bro, this shit. At the end of the day, like it's not worth the stress and like the lost energy to stress yeah. over, it, right? Jusco forgot some wires for these microphones in case you we, guys were wondering. What we, we we have this microphone, but he he brought the happy he brought the happy nets. At least like his priorities were like kind of like in order. I left my representative here, my yeah. brother. So <laughs> yeah, dude. So I don't know. I I feel like what's really helped me like try to stay on top of everything is with everything I have going on, man. It's just like at the end of the day, half the shit that you're stressing about is not really important. Bro, it's not worth stressing for. At yeah. the end of the day, dude, either shit's going to work itself out or you're going to work it out. Like, those are the two options, you know? And then if it's something that's out of your control that you're stressing about, it was meant to happen. Like, it's out of your control. So why stress it, you know? Stress about the shit in your control. What you're able, you know, you, you can't always, like, control what other people say, right? If it's about yeah. you or about anybody else. Yep. But you can control what comes out your mouth. You can control who you allow around your energy, who yeah. gets to soak up your energy. That's all the stuff you get to control, Yeah, right? Stress about that shit. We literally this week, that's that's what I posted. And then yesterday being with everybody at, at the party, like these, somebody asked me like, oh, how long do you know these people? I'm like, bro, it's only been maybe two months. And I'm like, but this was mandatory because when we came they embraced us. Yeah, yeah. They loved us. They're like, yo, are you coming? We can't wait. And as soon as we got there, yo, what's up? Hugs everywhere. You feel it. And then we're leaving, and I was leaving, and I, I say bye to everybody, and they're like, yo. One of them, Raul, shout out Raul, he was like, yo, bro, it's not even his party, but he was like, hey, man, thank you for coming. Thank you for being here with yeah. us today. And I'm like, bro, so this genuine. is, I was like, this is mandatory, and they all know it, she knows it, and my thing is like, I want to be in the room when I'm embraced. And I say this every week. Oh, man. I got to, like, when, as soon as I walk in through whatever door, if I'm, like, if we're not getting greeted in the right way, and I, one of one of my favorite rappers of the game, he was like, as soon as I see the bad energy, I'm out of there. Dude, you have to, dude. And, and so I know the game speaks a lot on that. Um, Kevin Gates, dude, is, like, another big one that's, like, I fuck with you. Right yes, here. sir. Yeah. Yes. But. Really? So yeah. It's crazy, bro. So that's my the dude. first time I ever heard Kevin Gates do was in 2011. We were in Kuwait, bro. It was like fucking miserable ass day. It was like 150 degrees outside. Oh, yeah. And one of my boys from like Kentucky was like, hey, um, he listen to this dude in the gym today. And I'm like, who the fuck is this, bro? He's like, Kevin Gates. Which song was, like, was it? Oh, bro, I can't remember, bro. I got it. Was, to it was, I think it was still. No, no, no. It was before that. It was before all that. Oh. And so I was like, yeah, whatever. He's like, bro, he's coming up. He's about to blow up. Da, da, da. But this dude was like. 
didn't have a whole lot of weight behind him. So I was like, whatever, dude. So that's the first time I heard about him. And yeah. then now we're in him coming out. And like, to me, dude, it's like when I see somebody like influential or whatever, it's like, cool. Okay. They have a big following. They're famous. But like, what are they famous for? You know, it's like, little backdrop. Dog. but for him, it's like, dude, his backstory, this dude got a degree in jail, dude, like changed his whole life around. Psychology. Like, huge motor. 100%, dude. But it, for him, it's like, again, like when you're saying like energy and who, who you allow to have it, who embraces you when you walk in. Right. Cause you can't always control, like I said, how everybody speaks and approaches you and all that stuff, but you see who the genuine people are, right? Who appreciates you, who you appreciate back, and that's who you want in your circle. You yeah. Know? Not everyone deserves to be in your circle, circle, and that's okay, you know? That's, you have control of all that stuff. That's, that's the biggest thing, and the I think the last couple of weeks, me and him, we talked about this, like just even being confrontational. Like, he knows I'm petty. I could be petty really? as a motherfucker. Not me, dude. Yeah. I'm the opposite. I'll <laughs> tell you, you're right, bro. Peace out. But keep that energy over but there. I'm out. Like, there's, like, certain things that have happened, and I'm just like, yo, like, we can, and I'm just like, should I? And he's like, nah, bro. I'm like, okay, never mind, <laughs> never mind. But the the biggest thing was the, was entertaining the circus. Mountain climber 3000s. <laughs> We're going to go hiking after this, right? Yeah. <laughs> We're going to go up uh, fucking Etiwanda. We're gonna go to the Claremont Loop. <laughs> we're talking. We're we're literally talking about building your circle on your table. Positivity, huh? We're all but, positive. But, but it, we said that we said this earlier. Positive, bro. Once you're, you know, if you're cool with that person or not. Like I could tell, dude, send anything, and like she knows I'm not serious, right? <laughs> Ziggy, same thing, bro. I can tell him the most like disrespect. Wait, who's who's Ziggy? Ziggy is the fucking dude with the non-prescription glasses, <laughs> and he knows, right? Once you're cool as fuck with somebody, bro, you can say the most disrespectful shit ever, and they just like will laugh with you because you're just like, bro, you're my boy. Like I don't fucking mean it, you know? <laughs> just go, <laughs> just go. <laughs> it's if you come in with that, he is like, <laughs> I guess, so Jose, like, this guy's gonna fight you. <laughs> Sometimes, like. But everybody watching this podcast, make sure you subscribe. But you know you're very cool with your people when you can troll them. <laughs> you know that's your circle. Bro. That's your circle. Oh, yeah. Like Dylan, I don't even say what's up to him. I'm like, hey, what's up? <laughs> and I call him. I call him a certain name that I know Cindy doesn't like because she's like, it? can we hear it? Nah, because what did you, what did you say on the podcast? Like, if you call someone stupid, playing around. You're gonna be- end up believing it at one point. I think Dylan believe. Oh, I think Dylan she knows. She went it. in on, on the podcast on that, so that's, that's she did. Why she's like, I gotta change it up, and I am gonna admit, like she posted her games. I was like, yes, and I put B I I I I I. It's a difference, though. Yes. She was. What is she? Bitch. She was like, Haha, thank you, but don't call me that. <laughs> that's her though. But tell me, you don't read that in her voice now. <laughs> it make like it's funny. But then when you're reading that person's voice, it's like 10 times funnier. So what's, what's, a, what's a crazy story that has, has happened to you? Now let's get into the neat and greedy. Now let's get into oh, shit. the second half, the special. The special. This is the second mean, half. I need, I need, that's pretty broad, bro. I, I had some crazy shit happen in my life. The what? <laughs> I think he needs a shot. I think we need to pour up. <laughs> what are you guys trying to do to me? <laughs> he, he, I have messages where he said, if I drink tequila... He transforms. So we're here. That's one way. To put we're it. gonna be here. <laughs> That's one way to put it. This is Jose. 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 No way. He's a trainer here. Jose is the nicest guy ever, but everyone always wants to fight him. He's looking more dead than his shoes. He got the mummy done. So I I want those shoes. They glow in the dark. Everybody got everybody a shot. Oh, I didn't get to juice because I thought you were drinking vodka. I did. You got the, I'm good, bro. I'm going to just you sure? be a man. Chug it with a happy dad. No chaser. Be a man. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody just get drink it out the bottle. Be a man. <laughs> I do have the pour in the truck, too. This bro, is a, oh, we're oh, bad. Like, we're bad. Like a bong? Nah. <laughs> you guys come to turn up. We just came to turn up at a gym, local gym. And oh, I want everybody shit. to know we are recording in Dre's gym right now in Rancho Cucamonga. I don't know the address, but I just know we're in Rancho Cucamonga. Dude, we just moved here. I don't even remember the address off the top of my name. Off if you don't, if you don't know where this is at, this oh, is man. where Friday was. Uh, next Friday, or day day, he lived in Rancho Cucamonga. It was, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you guys don't know, you guys you're too young. <laughs> Jose, <laughs> look at this. He's like the what? He was like, I'm not. Jose here. just graduated high school last year. <laughs> Wait, he graduated? Yeah. <laughs> he promoted. 
Jose, hey. Jose promoted last year. Hey. hey, he promoted out. I'm not gonna throw any shots, but Dylan doesn't even have the diploma. Oh, oh it's all right. Yeah, all right, so. but it tells before it gets hot. It tells yeah. everybody my before, boy, he gets, before he gets hotter. Hotter. Woo. I think we're going to start posting these podcasts like at 5 p.m. So everybody drinks at 5 yeah, p.m., not 7 a.m. Like three shots. Oh, you do post them in the morning, huh? Why yeah. Is, why is that? I post them at 7 in the morning because peop- when people listen to podcasts, do you want to listen to it when they're driving? Do you ever change it up? It's always 7 a.m. So before we got into 7 a.m., I was jumping around, bro. Monday, <laughs> Tuesday, 10 a.m., 3 p.m., Wednesday at 5 p.m. Like, I was trying to mess yeah, around with it. But it's so not much. bad. You're trying to figure out where your algor- algorithm is. At. Yeah, so as soon as I post it Monday, 7, like, it literally takes all week yeah. to do numbers. Social media, If you look, if you're not on TikTok right now, you're fucking it up. 100%. You got to be on TikTok. No matter what your business is, no matter what what realm you're in, TikTok is the best platform right now. So your biggest platforms that you you focus on right now is TikTok and Oh, IG. it's huge, bro, because when we had They feed off each other. Crazy. Like when we I had Jose on take like on the first podcast when we were at the apartment and then Dylan, like we were nowhere near social media. We came on TikTok when I think when we moved to LA, which is like 8 months ago. And I swear to, like, right now, when she was on the podcast, I think we're, like, 40-something, almost 50. We're sitting right now at 67K. Yeah, dude, I checked it last night. The numbers are crazy. Yeah, 67. Like, her videos went crazy. The videos from this week went crazy. I feel like so. I, I think I just followed you guys, like, yesterday. Right? Actually, I followed you. No, he he didn't follow me. me. I don't want to, I want to point this out. Dre did not follow me. I followed him. <laughs> so if he doesn't follow you, don't feel bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Follow just, him first. I'm getting to it. No, but I think the first thing that I, like, noticed, honestly, for you guys, is that she was just very genuine. Very, Half like, oh, man, just organic, dude. Like, there was, like, you can just tell, like, nothing was scripted. Nobody you, was, like, people were going off the fly. There's a lot of emotion. There's you can be authentically like, yourself a lot longer than being 100%, fake. 100%, dude. Like, you don't have to try to create content. You were just, I don't know if you've seen that fucking video. It was, like, you are the content. Yeah. Right. No, you, it, you are. Like, people are going to fuck with you because of who you are. People Always. are gonna like. People are gonna follow you. People are gonna support you, no, no matter what you do. They're gonna invest into it. They're gonna keen, 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 continue to follow you. Sorry, dude. I don't know if it's like my. my is, we'll blame I don't it on. If it's my accent, dude, or happy done. Wait, what kind of accent do you have, dude? I'm ESL, man. So like, I went to kindergarten only knowing Spanish. Um, went to ESL, all that stuff. Where are you from? Uh, Marino Valley, bro. <laughs> no, dude, Your was, parents? I was, I was born in San Bernardino, dude. Yeah, my mom is from um, Durango. Right. And then, um, but yeah, so anyway, so she married my stepdad when I was young, he's white. So she kind of stopped talking Spanish around the house. So I kind of like lost like the dialogue, but it's like, if you guys are talking in Spanish, I know what you're saying. hundred percent. So Dylan, if, you, them. if you talk shit around me, I'm going to know what you're saying. <laughs> but yeah. So it's like, but me to talk it back, is going to be broken as fuck. You're going to understand what I'm but trying like, to say. Yeah. But yeah. So anyways, it's funny because the people that make fun of you for speaking broken Spanish, like are the ones that cannot speak it. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, what, I want you to say me, tell me a sentence. Yeah, I'm like, what else do you have to say? <laughs> but you, bringing it back full circle to you, are you dating right now? Are you taking? Man, so, <laughs> yeah, man. So you're you're in an industry that's, I mean, populated. <laughs> you said by, we're gonna get hot after the break. It got hot. Go ahead, my hands are sweating. <laughs> <laughs> hey. It, don't tell them to knock down the camera. No, no, yeah. I, I kind of warned my people behind the camera if a tear came out, like, to knock down the We're camera. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. Maybe. Right. I don't know if we can get there. I don't know. Now, I think we went through, like, a pretty good questions. Questions. He didn't shed a tear. I was ready to share a tear. Dusko, Dusko fluffed me up, and now he's going to fucking. I'm going <laughs> to kick you down right now, bro. He's like, one more shot, bro. One more shot. Oh, no, don't worry. We're good. Oh, no, no. Honestly, man, yeah. Um. So I am single, man. Uh, I think I'm just in a place right now where it's like, dude, like I said, energy is just, I know it sounds super cliche, but energy is everything, right? So it's like, if you have like 10,000 things going on, it's like, you're going to half-ass 10,000 things, right? Yeah. So, you know, if you only have a couple things going on, it, everyone's different, but you're going to whole ass a couple things. Yeah. Um, when it comes to dating, man, it's like, it, it's just yeah. fucking rough in the streets. <laughs> rough in these streets you belong Uh, to the streets no 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 no. i thought i belonged to the streets dude but like right so say you start dating somebody right 
you invest a lot of time and energy into that person right throughout your day, right? You invest a lot of like, you allow this person into your life, right? Your background, they want to know everything about you. You want to know everything about them. Um, so it's like, obviously it's just, you know, there's a lot of single people in this world. It's like who you want to invest your time into, right? Right. Do you want to invest your time into like fucking like all this crazy shit? So yeah, I don't know. So <laughs> <laughs> I give him him shit all the time (laughs) about what I'm like, bro. You in the streets, bro? No, it's that's how I'm like. I I literally I. (laughs) He literally is. (laughs) Nah, I tell him I'm like, yo, like you gotta protect your heart, dog. No, yeah, 100, percent dude. And I think like me personally, where I'm at, right, running this, man, dude, like I have a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes, dude. Like like I'm running this business, right, the gym. I also train, like that's another business on the side. I have my son full time, right. That's like consumes a lot of my time and energy. Um, you know, I have my daughter. Um, so it's like a lot of people that like right now that I have on my plate trying to keep happy. We we house about 50 coaches here, dude. On top of like a doc, in house doctor, in house massage therapist. Um, you know, we're about to have like in house boxing coach, MMA coach. So it's like right now, I'm like, I feel like my hands are fucking tied, dude, trying to make like 10,000 people happy. Um, so yeah, right now, uh, I'm single, I guess. So let me ask the important question Do you believe in love? Yeah, dude, I think uh, there's too many people in the What do you, what, so all right, what's your definition of love then? Love? Yeah. Yeah, dude, I don't know. I guess it's just that person, dude, that just like makes you want to do anything and like go all out for it. <laughs> it's like, it's like, okay, that's my best friend. <laughs> that's my evil twin. <laughs> we try to do it the other day at the gym. No, my man. That should look like good. The more my heart. Because that's part of your workout. All right, three best friends. <laughs> we just went to Sonic to sweat out the demons. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, let's go back to the streets. No, yeah, man. Just, I guess somebody like, you just. I, non-negotiable, like I said, like not feeling obligated to do something for and with, and like, yeah, I do. I, I do believe in love. I do see myself getting married one day. Like, you're gonna come across that person who just genuinely makes you happy, and there, there's too many people in this world for you not to connect with, right? And I, I'm a firm believer, bro. Is you'll find it when you're not even looking. You know, yeah. it's like when people are constantly out there looking like I'm looking for the love of my life right now. You know, you're gonna start shooting your shot at people who are like not. Not him, not them, not her, not whatever. Um, you know, and when you're not even li- looking, you're going to be focused on yourself, building yourself, right? Because I feel like we should constantly be building ourselves um, is when you're going to come across that person, bro. It can, it's going to be in the stupidest place, too, I feel like. I don't know. I don't know why I think like this, dude. I just feel like it's going to be in the stupidest place. Like, bro, you're going to go fill up gas, and the lady next to you is going to be like, hey, man, nice shoes, nice hat. I'm a lover. Dude, it's, yeah. Dude, and you're going to be like, dude, that girl wants me, man. You know? It's going to be the stupidest thing, dude. And it's like, I don't know, man. It, I just feel like it's like that for everybody. So if somebody is stressing on not, you know, like, I'm never going to find anybody. I, I hate when I see posts like that, dude. It's yeah. just so much negativity like, why around me? it. I don't you speak it, just know if that comes out of your mouth, you know, you're going to speak it into the environment. Yeah. The universe. It, if you write it down and then post it on IG, it's just like, just know you're like spreading that negativity to all your clients and all that stuff. Dude, there's somebody out there. There's billions of people. In the and, world. and like be as a side dude, like everybody that's around me and knows me, like as soon as they're telling me their issues, whether it's relationship, whether it's life, I'm like, all right, so what's the fucking solution? Like I can't spend time talking about your issues and you're talking no about like, like acquaintances or like friends or family. So I am, I'm pretty friendly, dog. Like, like we, without knowing you, like, cool, let, let me give you the time of day. Let's <laughs> talk about this. Until you ruin it. And, and until, like, I just. I am. 100% I, that's Until I, I know you're just complaining, complaining, and that's all you want to do. Or you just want to use the platform. Like, now that we have some sort of a platform. No, no, no. You guys like, have a really good platform. Like, people won't are, say it, but. I, nah. This is a pretty dope Not platform. yet, not yet. But people come around and, like. Dude, I know someone that can be on. I'm like, okay, cool. Like, who? And I'm like, wait. I need a blue check mark or, <laughs> or Dre. <laughs> Whichever one. But it's, those, it's the same people that when we started, like, they didn't give a shit. It's always like that, dude. No one's going to believe in you. Bro, like, oh, man, I can show you endless. <sighs> wait, can, endless. We, can we get a free gym pass here because I don't train here no more? <laughs> Squirrel. <laughs> Oh, shit. <laughs> We're actually going to put a picture of you at the front desk and be like, do not let this dude in. This was wild. He, he just stays in the locker room that, the whole so time. Bring <laughs> your, so, so earlier, you know how you were saying, like, oh, 
like when you're telling people what to do and then you get told what to do, right? Stuff like that. Like that's why I told him I was like, yo, I've never had a trainer since I was in high school. Like I played high school, I played semi pro, I played college. Like I did my thing. For the longest years now, no one has told me what to do. Sorry, mom. I know, you know. But <laughs> she's like, like, wait till you get home. <laughs> she tells me something, and I'm just like, nah, like, I got to do what I got to do. And then this was like, come on, fool, another one, another one. <laughs> <laughs> fool, are you serious? Are you serious? <laughs> he was like, are you done? Come on, fool, push, push. I'm like, shut the fuck oh, up. Man. But, dude, like, be thankful for that guy, dude. Be thankful I do. for somebody to hold you accountable, dude. So. I do. I give, him, I give him his flowers, dog. And, yeah, bro. And, and, in, and my thing is, if you're in my circle and you got whatever you got going on, I'm going to support you 100%. Oh, 100%, Jesus, no so matter fun. what it is, bro. Like, right now, I really love you because you're a fan of Kevin Gates, dog. Fan of what? Fan of Kevin Gates. I'm good. Oh, yeah. That, that's but he's a little click, and then now we're boys for life. For life. Yeah, well, we're going to be here at the grand opening, too. Oh, Dylan's going to work out. This, Dylan wants to get a bump this, in. Uh, this Saturday, Saturday, July Dylan's, 16th, from 10 to 2, open gym, pull up. Dylan's ready to get a pump in. Yeah, yeah. Jose is ready Sin, to start his bench. Sin and Ziggy and Jose are going to run you guys through a workout. So, um, But, yeah, no, I think p- those people in your circle do that, like, motivate and push you like that, right? So I, I feel like I have three people in my life, dude, that, like. Let's talk about that. Consistently. Talk about your circle. I want to talk about your circle. My circle is very small. Dude. Like, everybody else is like, oh, my circle is so small. But, like, <laughs> I have a lot of friends, dude, obviously, right? You're cool with a lot of people. But, yeah. like, the people that you would genuinely go out of your way for that you would drop this fucking podcast for, yeah. right? How many would you say? One, two, less than ten, to be honest. Well, that's a lot. I have, like, three, right? And it's not not to say, like, anything bad about everybody else. Like, dude, I would drop my, if you genuinely needed my help, I would help you out, right? Yeah. But I have, like, three people in my life that, like, that have just shown me so much love, dude. Like, like before I'm, Dre was Dre or... I'm, or when Dre wasn't kind of feeling like Dre. on the up and coming before, after, kind of during the whole process. And I feel like that's what, like I was telling you with the whole influencer thing. It just yeah. goes a long way. It when does. You, when you help somebody else out, not asking for anything in return, dude, it's just like, just know like you imprint something in their brain where it's yeah. like, damn, I really fuck with this person. And I'll go out of my way for this person. That's what he knows. That's what Jose knows. That, and it's funny like, the funniest story, and you definitely don't know this, me and Jose coached football together. Oh, I knew that. <laughs> Wait, you did? No, I'm just kidding. Like, I, I, like, I, I, I just started talking to just go like, oh, we, oh, we could go. <laughs> I, I Wikipedia'd him, but it just it had some crazy videos on there. This was a bite shot. It was, a, it was the only fan <laughs> link. I was tripping. We have a Patreon, though. We have a Patreon. <laughs> it's a Patreon. So me and Jose coached, and I saw the video of Jose giving a speech to the kids, like, I want to tell you guys, great job. So I make I make keep, fun of him. Keep doing you, fam. <laughs> I make fun of him. I make generic, fun of him. But the generic uh, shit. Uh, Jose's always had the coaching in him, and now he's in his realm. And Dylan's always going to say this story without me even being there. But he's like, I, I fucking hated this fool. Yeah. <laughs> he, I Why co- does everybody want to fight that guy, dude? No, he hated me. Oh. Because I coached Dylan, and then me and Dylan coached together. And then when we moved to L.A., he's the first guy I hit up. I was like, yo, like. I don't know what we're gonna be doing, but come through. So these mo- these both motherfuckers, like I always give shit to, but I'm like, yo, these are the two motherfuckers that, yo, whatever you guys need, let's run it because people do need that support. People need that, like you need to build that circle. You need to build that table where you may not be in the same realm of business or life, but your end goal is similar, which is you want to be something. Of course, you. And I feel like uh, not to say anything badly on like where people want to get you because. Like, when I talk about, like, the entrepreneur life, right? It's for some people. It's not for everybody, right? Like I said, you got to dig really fucking deep. There's a lot of sacrifice. Yeah, bro. Like, you turned up yesterday. Saw it on IG, right? But for you to make sure you were fucking here on time, even though you were missing stuff. (laughs) It was dope, though, right? But it's like you knew you were going to be here. Like, I wasn't expecting a cancellation because I feel like I've I've seen you for this last week. (laughs) And I kind of made a judgment in my mind, right? No, like like, yesterday I was like, like, fuck, let me text this one. Make sure we're still good, though, because. (laughs) He did. We good? I'm like, yeah, bro, I'm pulling up right now. (laughs) Not He's like, fuck, I was hoping you canceled. Bro, like this week, me, Dylan, uh, our other friend Cindy is coming. I don't know if Jose's pulling up, but we're going to talk about this. Like, we had three podcasts this week. So yeah, I seen that. Yeah, yesterday, yeah. today, and then Boom, Thursday. Yeah. And then Saturday, we're still going to go out and do content because, like, shit's just, 
Shit needs to happen. Like, if you want shit to work out, you got to make it work. Yeah. Like, you got to do things that nobody else is going to do. Like, yo, how did you do this? Bro, I did what nobody else wanted to do. You wanted to take a break? I didn't want to take a break. You wanted to sleep? You wanted to spend time here? Yo, I had to go do this no matter what happened. Why? My thing is, like, what we're doing here, my overall goal is, like, I got to take care of the people that supported this, believed in this, and loves me. 100%. Like, I want to make sure he's good. I want to make sure he's good. I want. I still want to make sure my family is good. My parents, like, they don't need nothing. I want to show up like, yo, I got you. Yeah, yeah. It's the like, best feeling. The be- like, I think the best thing and the most smallest thing is, like, you go out to eat, say whatever I restaurant. Got I got it. I got this. Nah, 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 bro. How much you want to pull out? I got this. Don't worry about it. Yeah, dude. I got this. Next time, get me. Yeah, yeah. Like, you don't got to do it now. Best feeling ever, dude. Like, my, like, I've been, I don't know if you've been, like, I've been in scenarios where, dude, I was negative 50 bucks, negative 100, but I was putting, I was putting gas in my Honda when too, I was in too college. Many times. <laughs> like, in college, I was putting gas in my Honda. Like, I had $10, I filled it up to like 40. I was negative for a week. So I had to in pay the overdraft. Yeah. <laughs> so I had to pay the overdraft when I got paid and then more. But, yeah, bro, I feel it. Been there. But, Unfortunately, things happen, and it's like, yo, like, all right, I know how that feels. I don't want to be there no more. Ever, bro. You know what I mean? Like, there's still things that we invest and we spend time in, and luckily, throughout the whole thing, like, we we bought a house in Montana. We did our thing, and it's like, yo, like, we're I'm still investing. Like, I told my it's dad yesterday, ending, like, dude. no, I was like, yo, like, we finally, like, I want to give a shout out to everybody that that follows all the audio profiles because we're finally monetized on the profiles and yeah. audio because yeah. we're doing it. And I told my dad, I was like, yo, like, we finally got paid a little bit. And he was like. No matter the amount. It's just yeah, no matter. I, I sent it to him. I was like, yo, like, like, we, like look, dog, like, yeah, we're, yeah, we're, yeah, we're breaking yeah. it, dog. Like, we're doing this. That's sad, bro. And then, my, like, my dad, he owns his business. I work for my dad. And I always tell everybody, like, yo, I work for him. He <laughs> built that business. Yeah, I yeah. didn't build it. Like, he went through the struggles, and you went through your struggles building business. So when we pass it down to whoever it is, they don't have to struggle as much. As much, I want you to figure shit out. Yeah, of course. But as I tell him and us as dads, like my thing is when I tell my son, my daughter, follow your dreams. I want you to really follow your dream. Whatever this is, maybe is this. No, I, I think I think that's the biggest thing, dude. When it comes to like your kids, it don't matter what it is. Uh, and like I said, so. Generation to generation is different, right? So yeah. I don't know. Are your parents like super traditional? Yeah, yeah. So oh yeah, my mom still don't like that I'm doing this. <laughs> I do. dude, my mom, dude. I bought the gym. She's like, Mijo, you don't want to go back to school and get a good job, <laughs> benefits." And I was like, "Dude, what the?" Dude, nah, bush it aside. My dad, shout out my dad. I love my dad. But, you know, <laughs> I told him like, "Yo, I'm like, I'm going back to school to get my AA." He's like. So you're not going to work? <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to do both? <laughs> so I'm but like, it's, it's not just anything bad, bro. It's, it's that generation. Like that's. If if Mex- Mexican heritage, like if your dad has a business, they expect you as soon as you graduate, go work. No, yeah, yeah. Like no matter what, fuck your dreams. You're gonna come <laughs> and follow this dream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I told him, I was like, yo, and I always say, like, yo, that's his, and I'm gonna support him all day long. But I gotta follow mine. One hundred percent, bro. And I so know like, my path. One hundred percent, bro. And so like, you can give anybody in this world other than yourself, right, the recommendation on what you would do, what you think is right. Um, especially when it comes to your kids, bro, your home, you can say the same shit to your homies and shit. Like, hey, this is my recommendation on what I think you should do. But at the end of the day, bro, if you're like a really caring, supportive person, you're going to tell them, yeah. do what makes you happy. But this is the route that I would go if I was you. But do what makes you happy, right? Because yeah. at the end of the day, that's what the fuck they're going to do regardless, dude. They're bro, I, I can tell you right now, yo, I think you should do this, and I think that's going to work perfectly for you but say you do do that and it doesn't work out oh, who are you gonna come and blame yo you yeah, fucking yeah. told me this what the Disco, fuck is wrong with you take me out the podcast <laughs> take my video down <laughs> but that it's exactly what i talk, like yo this is what works for me whatever you want to do fuck it let's just run 100 percent on it it could be whatever it is what if you really want this 110 percent. let's do it oh. it it's not gonna come overnight Oh, That's what people never, people imagine that you owning this, being here, like this shit came <sighs> overnight. How long yeah. was this being built in? Bro, where I'm at now, and like I think where people, you know, and a lot of coaches that I'm very cool with, like jokingly jobs, will be like, ah, oh, bro, like you're finally in here all morning. And it's like people don't realize, and which is it's 100% okay. It's like people don't realize that this, what I have now, where I'm at in my life, dude, it's been like five years in the making, dude. Five plus, dude. 
and five years of like like i said all the shit that i had to go to and and like i said even at the time i wasn't complaining about it you would never see me on ig talking about like oh yeah night in my car or whatever i was like bro nobody fucking uh, my mentality dude when it comes to complaining about shit in my personal life i just like dude nobody cares everyone i don't care bro everybody in this fucking room has shit going on yeah nobody's life is perfect dude nah. right so it's like you know, you have that core group of friends that you can talk to about your issues and they're going to genuinely care. They're going to give you the recommendations and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, it's on you, bro. You, I don't care what issues you got going on, just go. It's on you, bro, to get yourself the fuck out of it. Yeah. Because nobody's going to hold your hand and fucking pull you out the mud. Yeah, I always get tell, yourself out the mud. I tell everybody, like, the, my, my close, my close, close homies, and one of them, shout out John, like, I was going through my shit, and I was like, yo, like, I don't know what, what's happening right now to me. Like, I know I'm going through something. Like, let's just go eat, dog. Like, I just got a vet, dog. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, where the, the, that's where my happiness is. <laughs> I was like, let's just go eat, dog. Like, I got a vet. And, uh, That's my baby. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. my twin. That's my evil twin. <laughs> my, my daughter right now, she's my fucking twin. Dude. <laughs> I, I don't know what it is. I'm like, <laughs> like, people be like, you're someone's just like you. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's dope. But, like, my daughter, I'm just like, no, that's my twin. Yeah. I don't know what it is. My, my son looks like his, like my girlfriend, his mom, and my daughter is like, yeah. that's me. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> I, I gave her the sin, bro. And she's like, I feel like I'm holding you. I'm like, <laughs> hey, <yo. laughs> give, me, give me her back. <laughs> she's joking. <laughs> no, but, but, and just to go back to what you were saying, bro, and like to piggyback off that. I was with my son, dude, and so, like, my son sees the most out of everybody, right? Because he's with me full time. <clears throat> he sees when I go home, I'm not fucking home, bro. I'm on my fucking phone replying to people, jumping on phone calls, dealing with a lot of behind-the-scenes issues going on, not only with here, with other business and stuff. And so he had somebody around me tell him that all this was given to me, and he heard that. And so we finally got home, and he's like, Dad, why did they say that? They don't know that you're always working, right? And my, it kills me, dude. Like, out of everybody, like, in my life, it kills me with, when my son's talking to me. Yeah. And, like, I, I'm always on my fucking phone. And he's like, Dad, you're not even paying attention. You're always on your phone. I'm like, Ugh, I'm like pull that out, pull it out. <laughs> where, where that shit gets me. And so, yeah, dude, nobody's going to see your struggles, man. They're just going to see, like, the end result of it, like, what you got out of it, all that stuff. But it's like... If that, I can tell you all my stressors, bro, you're going to be like, you good. <laughs> you good over there. <laughs> like, keep that over there. <laughs> they they see the result, but they don't see the process. 100%, dude. And like but I said, the, not everybody's going to see it. And I don't care for it. But that's the thing, right? It doesn't the, bring me the happiness for you to know what I, what I have I think on. everybody here, like, we can, we could post the process. We could post what we go through day by day. Yeah, bro, if you're posting your struggles, <laughs> I'm going to be like, I'm going to mute Dusko. I'm not going to unfollow you, Yeah, but I'm going to mute you. Yeah, right? because, because it goes back to energy. And I'm yeah. going to protect what I have going on. If I see you posting that, bro, you can be in the best mood ever, Dusko. And if you're constantly seeing the same person posting some negative shit, I don't care what you are, bro. If you hear some, I don't want if you, you want to listen to negative music or like depressing music all the time, you can be in the greatest mood ever and it's going to hit you. Yeah. And you're going to be like, man, why the fuck am I upset? Why yeah. am I in an upset mood? You know, yeah. like, it was going so good this morning and because you allow that energy. To and it's you. just, it, and it goes back to like those people. Like if you hang out with those people and we said it before, like, if all we're going to talk about is going out, going drunk, and doing this, that, that, and not talking about hopes and dreams and what we could be doing, like, bro, like, I don't want to, like, my thing with, and I tell everybody, like, yo, I don't want to be 35, 40 years old still trying to figure my shit out. Yeah. So what age did you feel like that really hit you? 23, when I had my really? son. No way. Yeah. You know what's funny, bro, is like I, like I said, I had my son when I was 19, bro, and I, I was still trying to figure out what was going on in my life. It didn't, I didn't really start thinking like that, bro, until I was, like, 27. So, all right. So 23, I had my son. By 24, yeah, hitting after 24 is that January, because my birthday's in October, Scorpio season, <laughs> among us. <laughs> <laughs> but we're at, I, was, I turned 24, and it was in the middle of everything. I was like, I'm meant for something bigger. You just like, felt it. I felt it. Wow, man. So we, when we took out the first, YouTube, like the first YouTube video I took out on the podcast, cringy. I look at him, I'm like, what the was fuck? Was it structured or was it like um, you run it the same way? Literally, nah, for this, this is, no, this is nowhere near <laughs> this. Like, it was just, like, I'm, I'm, it was, who's it was, on it? Who's it was, on it? No, it was just me. Wow. So I was like, yo, this, I, this. I'm going to go back and look at it now. And I was like, yo, this page is for this podcast and this is what, like, my story, <laughs> I'm whatever. I'm Dusko, I am 24. <laughs> 24, no matter. 
And I look at it and I was like, all right, cool. And my thing was like, all right, I put this out. Now I have something on my back. Now I got to follow up. I had my boy Paco, played at UCLA, everything. And I was like, all right, I had a second episode. All right, now it's on me. I got to continue. Like, it's no Now you got people watching. It, bro. bro, it's. And that's even more of a joke. How, how we said earlier, this, this was not negotiable. Like, we went every fucking Friday, 12 a.m. to 3 in the morning. Every fucking Friday, bro. Every Friday. We did not mess a beat until we moved. Like, when we were moving from West Covina to Fontana, we ran three episodes in a day. I was like, I need content. I need content. And then it got to the point in Fontana where my son was coming out in the videos. <laughs> and I'm, like, holding my kid. And I'm, like, and I told him. Screaming my, in the back. I told him, like, no, he's with me. Like, we're <laughs> podcasting and he's sitting with me. I'm, like, all right, bro. Like, I got to change this up. And my thing was, like, you know what? And we had, it wasn't an issue. It was a discussion that we had. I was, like, Yo, you know what? I got to move this somewhere else. Like, I got to make it attainable to everybody else. Because there was people I wanted that if I was, like, yo, cut in Fontana, oh, um, I'll let you know, I'll let you know. And I was, like, you know what? We're taking it to where everybody wants to be in. Let's go to L.A. <laughs> and, yeah. It, Break so, number three. <laughs> So I didn't think I'd last this long. Make sure you subscribe, you share, you follow all the platforms. Dre did not expect this. Not Again, we're gonna bring it up. Dre was like, "Bro, like, what are you, what are you gonna ask? Like, what are we gonna talk about?" Dude, I was hitting him up all week, like, and and we're here like an like, hour dude, later. Like, what are you guys gonna ask? He's like, "Dude, we want it to be organic." We're recording. Come on, bro. I know I fucked up already, but <laughs> I'm still good right now. Yeah. We're good. So, anyways, I was hitting up Dusko, and I was like, "Dude, like." Do you guys have, like, questions you're going to ask? Like, me trying to, like, this is my first podcast. All right, so, so did I we, wanted to be, like, did I give you, Did I give you a script? No, dude. But you were like, I wanted to be organic. I was like, all right, respect. And now we're here. Respect. we the most organic, most authentic podcast in the world. That's how we do it. You know what I mean? Oh. So you said something earlier. Oh, you, shit. You, you have a daughter. Yeah, yeah. How old is your daughter? My daughter is, she's about to be seven months. I have a daughter that's about it. That turned today six. No, six no months. No six way. months. The, the, it changed me. The dopest age, bro. It changed me. Yeah. Having my daughter from having my it's, son. It's your only, your only kid? I have my son that's two years old, and then my daughter now okay. that's six Those months. Those are really close. Dude, yeah. so sick. So sick. But I tell everybody, I am different because of my daughter. Oh, yeah. Like, I was, gonna, I was, <laughs> I was messing around with, with Brittany, my girlfriend. I was like... Damn, I would. I hope she doesn't find someone like me. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that as a dad, that's like what you can pray for. It's like it's the only thing you can pray for. Hey, don't find someone well, like you can me. Prepare her. Did that change you? Because like, you're talking about your son and and everything, but you haven't brought up your daughter. Or what? Like, yeah, dude. So my son's like the just the easiest kid ever, bro. It's just like, he's just the boyiest boy ever, man. Just like the coolest. It's a you, dude. In a like small me, form. Would cooler, bro. It's just like so, my son. My like me growing up, dude. I was like super introverted. Like if you put me in a group of people, I wouldn't talk to anybody, bro, unless somebody came up to me. My son is the complete opposite, bro. Yeah. He's just like that cool kid. He'll go up to anybody and be like, "Hey, I'm Gage," and yeah. like I'll, I've seen it, bro. And I'm just like, dude, that's fucking sick, you know. And so like, we live in a neighborhood where like literally everybody in the neighborhood goes to the school across the street. So we we'll be outside throwing the football. He'll be riding his bike, and 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 I'll watch the kids walk around the block with their parents, bro. They're like Gage, 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 and he'll be like the cool kid, bro. So, so, bro. I'm like, what the fuck, bro? Go say what's up to him. So, bro, the, go shake his hand. The parents bro. looking at him over here, like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> but my daughter, dude, it's like, man. Not that I like disrespect, I tell everybody this, dude. Not that I disrespected women before, but now I, I think I definitely keep more in mind, like talking to any female. Speak bro. I was like, this, this, shit, is, homie. this is somebody's daughter, bro. Speak this, this truth. This is somebody's sister. This is somebody, you know? And so I keep that in mind more and, and I like change the words I talk with a lot. Different. 100%. Do you feel. Because of who, like, when growing up until now, like, you got to carry yourself different because now you have your daughter? Oh, 100%, bro. Because, like, I feel like, like I, like I was saying to you, like, as a dad, it's also, like, a non-negotiable responsibility Correct. Correct. 
to show your daughter, bro, how he, how she deserves to be treated Treated. by anybody, you know? So, you know, you're showing her what she deserves and she'll not settle for less. I, I feel like that's what you hope, bro. I don't know what happens. <laughs> I, don't, like, girl, <laughs> I don't know either. No, I don't know. But I'm, I'm like, that's, I'm, that's what I can do as, yeah. like, as like my part, you know? Um, so, you know, so she, you know, I'm blessed, you know, I'm blessed to be where I'm at, dude. And, and like, you know, it's, it's not always under the circumstances that you, I feel like that you dream about, but you can only give whatever you can give, you know? Let me bring this full circle because we're, we've hung out for a long time right now. Yeah, and, it's like an hour and a half. And it doesn't do it justice because there's still a lot more to talk about. But you sound, and what I see on social media and meeting you today, that you're a great fucking dude. You're a great dude. You're a great fucking dad, amazing dad. Great fucking own, like, person as a whole, dog. You dude, said you had. was gonna make me cry. Man. I am. Stop, dude. You said you had, you had a stepdad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your real dad. I don't know what the situation is, but did did that affect you in so, some sort of way to like you want to be this type of dad now? Yeah. If I get teary eyed, it's not me. It's the happy dad. Nah, man. And like I said, obvi- like you were saying before, dude, not to talk negatively about your parents or like any of that right. stuff, but just like me and my journey, the way I grew up, to just like. <clears throat> My mom married my stepdad, dude, when I was, like, th- like three, right? My dad bounced out, dude. I have two older brothers with the same mom and dad. He bounced out when I was, like, I don't know, like, a year and a half, like, two or whatever. And then uh, my mom married my stepdad, and, uh, man, I just didn't have, like, that, like, loving father figure, right? Like, I would see my homies, dude, and, like, their dad would be like, yeah, bro, I'll go pick up, go pick up Andres, yeah. you know? I'm like, that's dope, why is he like that? You know, my yeah. parents. <laughs> my, and again, it looks like my mom was very traditional. Like, nobody needs to stay the night here. You don't need to go anybody else, anywhere else. Like, all that stuff. It is what it is. Um, but, yeah, dude, I, I think it's just, like, not to say n- anything negative to, negatively, but, like, I am where I'm at today because everything I've gone through. But it's just, like, you can just take the way you grew up, right? You can either do two ways. You can take the way you grew up and make excuses for where you are or how you are today depending on how you grew up or you can take how you grew up and be like bro i'm not going to be like that right and like i said everything everything and how i am towards my son towards my daughter is what i wanted to be what i wish i had and you know that's all you can hope for um as you grow up you get to be everything you wanted and everything you wish you wanted as you got older no. Do, you, do you feel now having your son right there? Do you feel like your your kids are proud of you? Uh, man, I would hope so. I think he flexes. It's <laughs> funny, man, because I would pick him up from his school all the time, <laughs> and I guess he told his friends in the, in the little uh, the junk car, huh? The yeah, junk car yeah, you're yeah, driving. Yeah. It, was in the, it was in the four series at the time. <laughs> the four series BMW. But I would pick him up, and his friends would come outside and be like, "Hey, Gage's dad," and they would like salute me. And one time, bro, the kid saluted me. And this dude had told him I was in the army, bro. <laughs> and so I was just like, oh, that's dope. So I know he brags about me, you know? Yeah. And I told him all the time, jokingly, dude, like, I always mess around and, like, I yell at him for something stupid, jokingly. And he knows it. And I was like, dude, I tell him all the time, bro, like, imagine if I was like that. I was like, just know that there are guys out there like that, you know? Just know your friend's dad, and, you know? And he has a lot of friends around the neighborhood, and they're, they're <laughs> their parents are a lot older than me. Right, so he kind of like compares and contrasts a little bit, but you know, like his homies' parents, dude, are like fifteen years old, older than me, you know. And so I told him like the way we conduct things, the way we do things, might be a little bit different. different. But it's like the age gap well, was a whole lot. Different. Let, bro, but to wrap it up and just give you the flowers, bro. You became a dad at a young age, nineteen. At that point, I don't know if you figured out life yet or you know your purpose yet. Damn. You know what I mean? <laughs> but no matter how you said, it was non-negotiable. You had to do what you had to do. Yeah, 100%. So I lit- when we walked in, I told you, I was like, yo, like, your car is sick. You know, you earned <laughs> this. Has it hit you? You're like, nah, it doesn't. But, yo, like, you have to look at everything you have around you. We're in your spot right now. We're literally podcasting with you. We came, we have our platform, but our platform is built off of our guests. 
We came because you have a story to tell. What you have done in life has set you up enough, and what you've done with work has put you in this position. Not everybody that, that helped you and everything, you got to give them the flowers, but because of you and because of your own cojones, you are here. You you didn't put an option. You didn't put a, an excuse. You did it. You're become, you are a great dad. You are a great owner. You are yeah, this. Right, you right. are a great, like, you have to. Yeah. Like, this is one thing I tell everybody. Like, I've never done it to myself until Sin, Sin did it to me. And, and there's, when we were in San Diego, even with Chris, shout out Chris Topol, he was like, yo, what you guys are doing is great. But my my job, my purpose is I got to show you and tell you, like, yo, you're doing it. You should be proud. You should be like, yo, I did this because of what I did and what I've done. I got this, and I'm content right now. Yeah. So I don't. If you if you haven't taken a moment yet, maybe do it today. Maybe do it tomorrow in the morning, and be like, "Yo, like I'm a bad motherfucker. I've done this. No matter what the option was, no matter if I was sad, depressed, angry, mad, sad, I still got up and I had to do what I had to do to be who I am. To not just for myself, but for that guy, yeah, yeah. that guy that looks at you every single time, bro." That little girl that looks at you every single time, you are who you are because you survived. 100%. And you're surviving. <laughs> so I want to give a shout out to Dre, bro. Come on, we got to give this up. We out here. <laughs> but the grand opening happening. I think when this comes out, the grand opening already happened. So hope you guys all pull up. You got to have... Bring your gym shorts, your shirts, bring your best gear, whatever it is. You got to show out, show up. Bring your sweat towel. Sweat. <laughs> bring your camera. You got to content, bro. You got to yeah, make sure your content. Bring, it, bring your tripod. Bring your tripod. Bring your own tripod, please. None of them are going to be. We ran out. We're going to run out. <laughs> but, bro, I want to appreciate you. I want to thank you so much for allowing us your space, your, no, it, your platform. 100%, man. I appreciate you guys coming out. Like I said, I come across your shit, and it was just. Stupid organic. Purpose. I'm not gonna lie, bro. As soon as I, I see you, I, I want to be on. Here. As soon as you liked it and commented, I was like, "Fanboy, like, oh fuck, oh shit, we're on, we're on, dog, we're on." <laughs> oh my damn, it's all, it's all good, bro. You guys got sin on here first, but we had a one upper. <laughs> it, but sin knows it. I think we we set that up within like a Wednesday or Thursday, literally Wednesday or Thursday, and. To the craziest thing is things, how we said earlier, things happen for a reason. 100%. We are here because this is what Power Above wanted us to be. The story that we needed to share, we're going to be sharing it. And people on all social media platforms are going to tap in. Because whatever everything you said today, there's clips. A week's clip isn't going to do it justice. Really? Nah. We need a part two. We no, yeah. And I was tripping, bro. I was like, what are we going to talk about? You're like, dude, like, like we're going to establish what needs to be said. I was like, I don't think I need to say anything. You're like, no, like shit needs to be said. And I was just like, oh shit. But in some respect, I was like, yeah, I'm sure like out of this conversation, bro, it's, it's going to hit. And bro, even if it hits at least one person. You hit one person, you change one person. And that's, and that's the goal. Jose, this is why everybody wants to fight you, bro. You want to get everybody fucked This is up. what everybody doesn't want Jose here, bro. <laughs> hey, give a little man uh, before he jumps on. <laughs> We got the orange juice. We really? got the orange juice and cranberry. We got the orange juice and cranberry. the orange juice right now, too. Nah, shout out, Jose. That's my boy. That's the best trainer out here. Next to Sin. Hey. <laughs> She's not listening, but never mind. Jose's the best one. <laughs> but if you have not subscribed and shared the movement, you got to do it now. You got to make sure you do your best because if you feel like you're not doing it right now, like you got to give yourself the flowers. Just like I'm telling you, and I'll tell everybody, Take a moment, take a breath, take a step back, look at everything you built, and be proud of where you have came from to where you are now, and then keep going. Because this shit isn't ending, dog. It was, oh, no, it's, I, it's never ending. My, my favorite phrase, quote, is like, yo, we just getting started, <laughs> dog. So we got a lot, of sh- a lot of shit going on. Some DJ Khaled, they didn't believe in us. They didn't believe in us. <laughs> <laughs> Lie on. But, but we do. <laughs> Lie on. But a toast. Yeah, a toast. Everybody bro. out there, a toast. Everybody, thank you guys. Let's do this. Woo! Oh.